a lot of people on Twitter seem to be really um, upset slash annoyed with all of the changes. So we will see. Hey there, it's Imran and you're watching Imran Plus. Welcome to my breakdown and theory video of the Miss Marvel official trailer that dropped earlier today. Check out my reaction to that right up here. But for now, we are going to be talking about all of the details and all of the scenes that we got in the trailer, as well as my theories about what the show is going to be about. We're going to be talking about her powers changing from the comics, her origin story being completely different, and who the villains are and how that relates to the larger story in this show. So if you want to know more about all of those things, keep watching. If you want to go into the show completely spoiler free and go in completely blind, totally understand this video might not be for you because there might be some potential spoilers. So here's your warning. Before you go though, make sure if you haven't already to click that subscribe button so you can help this channel grow and so you don't miss any upcoming videos. But if you are interested in talking about it, let's jump into this right now. Okay, so we start off with this shot of her notebook, of Kamala's notebook during class and she's doodling during class which is extremely relatable. Who has not done that before? But it's really funny that she has not a single actual school note or lecture note in this notebook. Like it's completely doodle. So she's not paying attention whatsoever. Clearly it's boring because she wrote boring. Most importantly, she's drawing Ant-Man versus Man-Ant, which I've never heard of before, but is creative. So I really like that. So then we move into the uh, Marvel Studios logo, which is a thought bubble. And I, at that point, was like, wow, this is really, really cool and unique. And then we had blinding lights come in by the weekend, and I was so blown away because I was not expecting that at all. I thought it was really fun and refreshing, and I, I just think it's gonna be fun at the very least. I feel like it's a mix of Never Have I Ever, Spider-Man Homecoming, a little bit of Scott Pilgrim, and then Diary of a Wimpy Kid, all put together. And for a show that's going to be centering about a high schooler who gets powers and is a fan of some superheroes, I think that's a really good mix. And I am really looking forward to it. I am, I am hesitant about certain things, which we are going to talk about later in this video. Here we have Kamala talking to probably her uh, guidance counselor or something. And first of all, they never have offices this big. So that's interesting and cool. Good. The, the school seems to be well funded. But I like the posters that this person has in their office. I, I think they're really fun and just so, it's a great characterization of this counselor. But I also really love these text boxes that come up. I think that that's a really good reference to comics and also Kamala's doodling and just her, her nature and her mindset and how she approaches people and situations in her life. Now here, I wanted to point out the GWW. That is actually a reference to G. Willow Wilson who is the creator of the Miss Marvel character. And she wrote the first Miss Marvel comic run um, and is very like instrumental to this character existing and being so popular with fans. So I thought that that is a really, really cool shout out. And I, I, I like seeing that. Here we have Kamala with her friends, Bruno and Nakia. Bruno is her best friend who is also a love interest. So that's gonna be interesting. I'm sure that they're gonna explore that throughout the series. And then we also have Nakia, who is another one of her good friends and is Turkish. And really cool to see a fully hijabi character for this the entire show, I'm assuming. That's a really, really big step and I'm really excited. I know a lot of people with the hashtag fix Miss Marvel campaign expressed that they would have liked a actual hijabi actress to be playing this character. And I agree with that, I think that those actresses have very few uh, opportunities as it is, and I would have liked to see it go to someone who can, who actually has that lived experience. We'll just have to see how it affects the show. I mean, the show's finished, so let's just see. Here we have a closer look at her shirt, and we have a mini A4 situation, which I think is really fun. We have Captain Marvel and next to her Valkyrie, both of whom are very popular with shippers. They I've seen a lot of people really pushing for that couple, so I wonder if uh, Marvel is going to lean into that and make that a canon. They could be planting the seeds, or this could be another Stucky. We'll have to see. But we also have Wasp on the other side. I know Evangeline Lilly is digging herself into a crazy hole. I don't know what she's doing. Um, 
but the Wasp as a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe still is existing and seems to be uh, like a, a face of the Avengers, so that's cool. We have uh, Kamala and Bruno in some sort of convenience store, which apparently also has costumes. She's either going to steal that or buy that and then wear it later. Then here we have them at a party, some, some high school party, and then we have our introduction to an important character in the show. This is most likely, actually pretty certain, Kamran, the character of Kamran, who in the comics is actually like a childhood friend or someone who the Khan family has known for since uh, they were children and is also a potential love interest for uh, Kamala. However, this is all this character in the comics is also a villain and ends up kind of betraying or backstabbing Kamala. I think that there's a possibility that they could be using that same storyline here where she might develop feelings for him, but only for him to then betray her. Keep your eye out on that and also keep an eye out on the fact that he might have powers himself. So we'll see. And here's another daydream that uh, Kamala is having of being a hero and being celebrated as a hero. And I actually really, really love the shot because it felt like it came directly out of like the graphic novel or one of the comics because I, I just I think it captures her innocence and her her love for these characters and just the the mythology it's really cool and I actually really liked it it's also a really uh, visually appealing shot too we have another shot of Kamran outside of school and you can see on this uh, hand he has a bracelet and that is actually a thespi which is like like a beaded bracelet or necklace that you can use for prayer in Islam. So it means that this character is also still going to be Muslim, which I think is great. The shows are going to be huge for having like a lot of Muslim representation. Here is Bruno and Kamala at Avengers Con, which at least I think it's Avengers Con based on their lanyard. Yeah, you can see New Jersey, Avengers, and then you can't see the rest. But I believe it's Avengers Con or some sort of equivalent, like basically like Comic Con. Um, and I assume that it's going to be stuff about the Avengers. I wonder who is actually like commercializing this stuff because I could see Tony Stark doing it, but he's not around anymore. So who is making all this like fan gear and stuff and selling it? Uh, that's crazy. We get some more shots of her and her in her room. And here we have her mother. We, are, we meet her mother and then we meet her father later on as well. But here is our first look at the bracelet which is the cause and the root of her powers. So she's in some attic and she opens this chest and she finds this bracelet. Now this is a family heirloom, as many people have reported and is rumored. This is a family heirloom that gives her her uh, powers, which I guess are constructs essentially, kind of similar to like Green Lantern. Basically, I think that this bracelet, which gives her her powers, either ties into the villains, which I believe are Jin or like semi Jin, or it's going to tie into Kree and like the Captain Marvel mythology and it's some sort of Kree technology. I'm inclined to go with the former though, because since this seems to be a family heirloom, I believe it connects to my theory and what others have said about the show regarding the villains. And we'll get to that in a moment. Here we see her putting it on and you can see that it immediately blows up to be purple and the energy flows through it and she's wearing the costume that she I believe is wearing at Avengers Con um, which again is straight out of like the video games too. There her eyes light up as she puts it on which is a common theme among the Marvels. We have Captain Marvel and then Monica Rambeau. Um, I'm not sure what they're gonna call her Spectrum, Photon and now Miss Marvel. All of their eyes light up. The Marvels light up eyes so that's really cool and now you can see in the background um, they have the uh, like blow ups and inflatables and like I think that's a stand behind her. So I think this is Avengers Con or whatever convention she's at. But this is one of the reasons I think that they changed her powers is to tie it into like make it more tied into with Captain Marvel. And I know some people have issues with that because her original powers in the comics were really crucial to her character because she first, she can change her shape basically. She basically morphs into Captain Marvel, the Captain Marvel that existed at the time. So she's blonde and white, and that's how she first gets into like being a superhero. And 
part of her character growth is realizing that a brown girl can also be a superhero. And she can be a superhero being herself. And then that's when she just uses her powers to embiggen parts of her body. So I know people are really big fans of that in the comics, and I think it does a lot to build her character, but they have completely eliminated that essentially here. So I wonder how they're going to address that part of her character with these new powers. So we'll see. Here we have what happens, I guess, when she puts on the, the, the bracelet or the gauntlet. And uh, I guess she goes into like this world or the, the energy like engulfs her. And it's very reminiscent of when Monica Rambeau got her powers in WandaVision. And, it, and if you can see, the Marvels all have some sort of light based powers or light energy based powers. And I think that that is also the case here. Now here, we have something happening in her living room, which I have no idea what's going on. Either this is real or it's some sort of dream sequence, but I can't tell what's happening. Then here we have a look at her brother, Amir, who I believe is probably going to get married in this show. And so we'll see later on the wedding venue, which I think it, either some sort of part of the wedding ceremony or the actual wedding itself. And things are going to go wrong, but we'll get to that. So this is the introduction of that character. And then of course, Circle Q, which is a famous from the comics. This is where they all hang out, but it's gonna get attacked. So here we have a look at her powers and how they work. But I think that this shot is more important because it gives our first look at the red dagger, which I think they have changed from the comics. So essentially in the comics, uh, Kamala and her family go to Pakistan. I believe that the family is going to go to Pakistan for some reason, likely to prepare for Amir's wedding, her brother, which is going to take place probably later in the season or like halfway through the series. And so while she's at Pakistan, she's going to meet the Red Dagger. And in the comics, the Red Dagger is a vigilante, a Pakistani vigilante, whose real name is Kareem. And he is like a high school age, uh, contemporary to Kamala and he doesn't have any powers but he has a bunch of knife, knives and daggers that he throws and so he's like the local hero there. I think in this series they have changed the red dagger from being a solo and individual vigilante to being a group of vigilantes, a local vigilante group. Why do I think that? First, this scene takes place in front of a bunch of daggers and the room that we're in is going to come up later as well, but she's also wearing red. So I think that she is going to be inducted within this gang and this group when she's going to first run into Kareem, the original red dagger from the comics. They're probably going to fight and then she's going to realize that he's not an enemy. He's also a hero trying to do good. And then Kareem will probably take her to his base where he, she will be introduced to the rest of the red daggers and then they will make her, they will welcome her as one of them. And that's why I think she's wearing the red. Another reason why I think that the Red Dagger is a group of vigilantes is because there's a lot of rumors of big Bollywood and Pakistani actors being cast in the show, namely Farhan Akhtar and Fawad Khan. And so my theory is that those actors are going to be playing characters or members of the Red Dagger gang. And I think that this is probably their home base where you have a bunch of daggers. And I think that that is if they do that, it would be really, really cool. We'll see. This could also just be Kareem's house himself. Like maybe he's rich, like Bruce Wayne or something, and he has all these daggers himself. So here we have a look at how her powers work. I think visually there it's beautiful. Like it kind of looks like it kind of reminds me of America Chavez, actually. Like when she punches, like in the Doctor Strange trailer, when she punches through multiverses, it's like the blue star, but then inside we kind of have like the purplish color. Kind of looks like that, but this is more crystalline. And so like Green Lantern, she's creating these steps that she can walk on. Here we have a shot of her actually using her powers. And I think that they are trying to make it visually resemble her embiggened powers. You can see like she's using it to uh, increase the size of her hands and her legs. So I think they are trying their best to make it fit in with the comics, but they've clearly changed it. So. I'm curious to see how it goes with fans. I personally, well, I'm open to it. I'm open to her powers being changed. And I think that this is an interesting compromise 
with them being like these constructs that she can use instead and maybe she can say in begin when she uses the constructs i think they visually look cool like that is a really cool shot okay but here we have a first look at who i think could be the potential villains of this series um, they're walking into some sort of building this is where i want to talk about them here that we see them in like this this smoke and they're in shadows but i believe the villains here are the clan Destine. This has been rumored from other people and some uh, scoopers have also said, confirmed that this is the, the clandestine of villains. That explains why there are rumors that Miss Marvel is a genie. Clandestine are essentially a family of superpowered beings and they are all offspring of two main characters, Adam of Destine and Alaylith, who is a jinn. What are jinn, first of all? So in Islam, there's a concept of these creatures, uh, these beings called jinn, which can be translated to demons or spirits, depending on what you're reading and who you're talking to. But essentially, there are, there are three creations. We have humans, which are made from like mud, clay, dirt. Angels, which are made from pure light. And then we have jinn, which are made from a smokeless fire. In this story, we have a jinn falling in love with a human and then producing offspring, who then are half Jin, and thus have abilities or powers. The rumor is that Kamala herself is a Jin or a half Jin, um, and I believe that she's likely descendant a descendant of these two people, Adam of Destine and Alayla. That's where I think the bracelet comes into play. It's either an artifact, or there's a, literally a Jin in there trapped in there, or because she is a Jin herself, she's able to use it. Oh, maybe the bracelet is what enables her to channel her powers. And that's why the clan Destine wants it, because they probably can't channel their powers the same way that she can. She can probably conjure up whatever she wants with her mind and chooses to make projections, but the clan Destine want it for other reasons. Oh, that's actually really good. Nice. Uh, I think that that might be it, actually. So here we have now some scenes of uh, Kamala in Pakistan. And now this, I think, is a really interesting reference to a classic Bollywood uh, film. And this, re this reminded me of that scene, so I wonder if that was intentional. Later, we see a bunch of townspeople or villagers also uh, marching or moving. I wonder if this is them migrating or they are after something. This is a really interesting shot. I'm not sure what's going on here. Here we also have the the, the building that we saw before, the green with the you know very South Asian designs, who where I believe the Red Dagger is based on, either Red Dagger the solo individual, Kareem, or the Red Dagger group. Here we have our first look at the Red Dagger Kareem himself. And I think he looks really good. Here they're in a uh, train station. You can see a uh, sunny cold drink here. And you have it written in Urdu as well. And there, this is probably where uh, Kamala first meets Kareem. Uh, and, and, and so they're fighting each other. And you can see her one of her, her frisks come in and like try to attack him and then here he's about to throw a dagger probably. Okay, here, this is an interesting scene. So here is the wedding venue. Well, I, at least I believe to be the wedding venue. In the background, figures standing and surrounding uh, Kamala. These figures match the ones that we saw earlier in the, in the fog and the smoke. So I believe that they crash this wedding, things go wrong, and they are confronting her for the first time. You can see in the back the food trays. That's literally exactly how it is in the weddings. You have the food over there. I wonder what they have. Probably some really good stuff. So this could be a Lalith, who I think is going to be the main villain probably. When you hear that woman say, do you know who you are? They play it up to be like, I'm a hero, I'm a superhero. But I believe that it's actually going to be in reference to her being a jinn. Do you know who you are? You are a jinn. You are one of us. And I don't know how that's gonna go with general audiences, specifically Muslim audiences, because I don't know how people are gonna to react to Marvel using this element of religion so freely and making so many changes with it. I personally don't know how I feel about it either. Like I'm not really a big fan of them playing around with this concept like this, which is surprising because the, sh the showrunners and directors are all Muslim. So we will see how that turns out. 
Okay, here we have Bruno and who I believe to be Kamran, who seems to be injured. So I'm not really sure what happened here, but Bruno is wearing the same jacket that he wore at the Avengers Con. So maybe it's a continuation of that scene. Here we have another shot of this time uh, Kamala at the train station. And you can see she's in casual clothes and she just has her mask, her domino mask. But yes, she's about to throw a punch, throw a fist at the Red Dagger. You can see another cold drink stand there. So yes, I think they meet at the train station and they start fighting. Now this is a really, really cool shot of her powers and how her powers work. I think visually they have chosen really nice colors. Honestly, the Marvels are just going to be a bunch of rainbows. <laughs> like we have um, Captain Marvel and then Monica Rambeau and now Miss Marvel and they're all very, like their powers are really colorful. But I, I think it looks, it looks really cool. So here we have this uh, police force or military force uh, invading the school. I'm not really sure what's happening here. Maybe this is the same like uh, smoke that we saw earlier where we first saw the clandestine. Then here we have her in her full costume, which I think looks really cool. And then there's Kamran, who she is uh, protecting. And then maybe, oh, maybe this is where Bruno then takes uh, Kamran. Like maybe they escape together. So this must be later in the season when she has her costume and has and, and knows her powers. But I believe her costume is going to come from Pakistan. And here's another shot of her using her projections to shield them. Here we have her saying, I'm a superhero. Here we have her logo, which I think is really cool. And then we close with a shot that's recreating the iconic cover photo of the graphic novel of her sitting on top of the lamppost. So that's everything. What do you think of this breakdown and what do you think of my theories? that? She's a Jin, and this bracelet is some way of channeling her Jin powers and that the clandestine want that bracelet from her and that's why they're after her. Is it one red dagger or is it a gang of red daggers? What are your theories? I'm really curious to know. If you're a fan of the comics, what do you think of the show? I'm very, very, very curious to hear your thoughts, so please leave them in the comments below and I can't wait to check this out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great time. Lots more videos coming soon. But in the meantime, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Click the bell icon so you don't miss any videos. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and fellow movie enthusiasts. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.